I'd like to welcome everyone to the 2024 Veterans Day um, ceremony. Uh, it's a wonderful time that we have here together and thanks for each one that is here. I'd like to recognize the post-79 chaplain, Paul LaPierre, to open the proceedings, uncover. O oh God of hosts, we bow our heads in thankfulness for the victories thou hast granted us and to those peoples who have united with us to stamp out the evils of aggression, intolerance, and greed. We beseech thee to bring the blessings of understanding to the families and friends in this and other lands of those who have given their lives that men may be free. Grant, O God, that those closest to the fallen may mingle the pain of their losses with the enabling light of sacrifice for civilization, sacrifice for a better world, for this and other generations yet unborn. Grant us too, O God, the courage to so live with the family of nations around the world that the end of strife will be the beginning of enduring peace. Grant us patience in planning with our fellow men and women a world in which nations may resolve their differences by peaceful means. Touch though thou the souls of people in every land with the enduring light of wisdom, so they may from a brotherhood which will strive to further the arts of peace under laws and ethics, blessed by thy love. Grant us now thy continued blessings upon unity and strength that makes victories possible in war, that we may win greater victories of peace. Amen. Amen. I'd like to recognize the Senior Patrol Leader for the, our scout troop to lead in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Recover. <clears throat> On Veterans Day, this day, we are commemorating the services of veterans of all wars. We remember how men and women set aside their civilian pursuits to serve their nation's cause, defending the freedom of mankind and preserving our precious American heritage. We believe our strength on the field of battle, on the supply lines which nourished our armed might, lay in the justice of our cause against the forces of evil. We believe our determination has made us better warriors because we fought with our minds and our hearts as well as our bodies. We recognize service to our country, and her cause does not end with the termination of military service. We continue our endeavors in behalf of an honorable world peace with a feeling of profound gratitude to God and to the men and women who gave their lives as their part of the cost of this noblest of causes. Out of blood and sweat, we learned of purpose, sacrifice, tolerance, bravery, and discipline. These are solid foundation stones upon which a great nation is built. In our continuing quest for an honorable world peace, we must cultivate these virtues. I'd like to recognize the first vice, acting first vice commander, Paul Amatucci. Thank you, commander. War has taught us the lessons of obedience to command. The game is more than the player, and the ship is more than the crew. There is a greater discipline we must now pursue if we are to preserve the virtue of obedience in our quest for an honorable world peace. This is obedience to the laws we ourselves make, the voluntary discipline of citizenship. Under our system of government, we may change the laws by majority rule. We may persuade our neighbors to new theories and new courses. We may advocate in the free elections the choice of veterans 
or plans. As good citizens, we follow the choice of the majority, whether that choice be the individuals or not. This is the virtue of discipline, which must be in our peace. This is the lesson we must learn at home, in school, on the playing fields, in organizations, in the community and the nation. In, it is the lesson of voluntary obedience to the decisions of the majority. We must not be unmindful either of the conclusions of others with whom we have joined in the quest for an honorable world peace. This is the higher order of disciplines. Now we will have uh, Gretchen Farwell representing our female veterans. The hurts of war fall alike upon those who wear the same uniform. No matter how they suffer, or no matter how they differ in race, creed, or culture, those who fight together, suffer together to achieve, achieve a common aim. In the similarity of battle dress, there is a common denominator, the common purpose, the sharing of danger, the suffering which brings in time of war, a tolerance which adds strength to a cause. As we put aside the brown and blue and green fabrics that made us one people on the battlefields, we can hold our minds, hold in our minds that tolerance we have achieved. In tolerance, there's progress, progress towards a better and happier world. Our second vice commander, Mike Cobley. Courage is one of the virtues born of war. The courage of individuals in the face of danger and the courage of nations to protect the weak and punish the aggressor. There is bravery to be shown in peace as well. May we recapture the courage which turned the wilderness into cities that bound men together under government. We can turn slums into comfortable homes, turn uncertainty into certainty. We can reach new heights of civilization an opportunity for the men and women of this nation if we have the courage to expect and work for the better way of life. There can be romance in this challenge also. The bravery that fights for political, social, economic, and spiritual gains may be more difficult to practice, may be unsung when achieved, but it is all the more worth striving for. Now the post-79 adjutant, Phil Jinx. If there be glory in war, it is almost incredible spirit which it engenders. Those who offered their lives sacrifice their all with magnificent abandon. Heroism becomes contagious. Yet too, in warfare, greed and brutality are epidemic. Too often, it is these later which uh, persist in the peace that follows. Let us strive to see the same spirit of self-sacrifice that is cultivated in peace and has been exhibited in war. It behooves us to rear new standards of success, to inspire youth in peace as youth was inspired in war. Public honor must be given where public honor is due, not to the manipulator or the, of the market, the seeker after profit, power, or position, but rather let us honor the heroes of science who alleviate human suffering and carry to greater heights the standards of civilization. Let us honor those who in public service Seek not how much they may scurf from the nation, 
but how much they can give. Let us honor those who devote their lives to the education which will lead our children to the lot, to, on to live and laugh and learn and love as we have only dreamed of doing. Let us honor those veterans who carry into the ordinary affairs of life a noble idealism and sincere capacity for self-devotion. Let us translate the devotion of war into a devotion of peace. Let us will to live as well to, as to die for our country. Hurrah. And I'd like to introduce the Auxiliary President, uh, Acting Diana Lapierre. <laughs> The waging of war involves more than just the combatants who fight to the death on the battlefield. <clears throat> the fighting forces begin at the fireside and in the hometowns. The repercussions of war's t uh, terrible brutality have chilled the heart and dimmed the hopes and dreams of many a loved ones left behind on the home front. While the horrors of battlefield may not have been our experience, we have lived with terrifying loneliness created to answer an aggressive uh, challenge. In waging war, we have moved forward with a unity of purpose which made us strong, forgetting pettiness, egotism, and pride. Our hearts beat in tune with those in other nations fighting for freedom and dignity and opportunity of mankind. <clears throat> Excuse me. In our constant quest for an honorable world peace, there is need for unity of purpose if we truly are to move toward a brighter tomorrow. In times of peace, we can use the ennobling virtues of war and put behind us its ugliness and suffering. In peace, we shall go forward together to scale new heights of achievement in unity of purpose in sacrifice for the common good, in tolerance for those of different faiths and creeds, in bravery to fight for social and economic gains, and in the discipline of good citizenship. We shall move forward in the sight of God as a strong nation in a peaceful world. At this time, it is my honor to recognize Representative Tom Levine, who is our keynote speaker for today. Good morning, everyone. Thanks for joining us here today. Today we gather to honor and celebrate the brave men and women who have served in our armed forces, not just in Maine, but around our nation. Veterans Day is not just a date on the calendar, it's a solemn reminder of the sacrifices made by countless individuals who have defended our freedom and our way of life. Each of our veterans carries a unique story. Stories of courage, resilience, and commitment. They have faced unimaginable challenges, often far from home, in the name of duty. From the battlefields of distant lands to the peacekeeping missions around the globe, their dedication to service is a testament to their character and strength. We honor those who have served in every branch of the military, Army, Navy, Air Force, Marine Corps, and Coast Guard. Each of these men and women has contributed to the protection of our nation, ensuring that the principles of liberty and justice endure. As we reflect on their sacrifices, let us remember the families, too, of our veterans who have stood by them through deployments and separations. They, too, have endured hardships and deserve our gratitude. Our veterans and their families embody the spirit of resilience and hope and they remind us of the importance of community support. Today we also recognize that many veterans continue to face challenges, whether it's finding employment, accessing health care, or just readjusting to civilian life. 
We must ensure that our commitment to them does not end with their service. It is our duty to support them as they transition, providing the resources and opportunities that they need to thrive. As we honor our veterans, let us also commit ourselves to a future where peace prevails, where conflicts are resolved through understanding and where the sacrifices of those who have served are never forgotten. In closing, I encourage each of you to reach out and thank a veteran today. Let them know their service matters and their sacrifices are indeed recognized. Thank you and happy Veterans Day. So we're going to have a benediction and prayer, which will be followed by the Honor Guard and the Bags Pikes, which will be Tom Martin, a Vietnam and Double Purple Hot veteran, will lead in playing the service branch hymns and Amazing Grace. Also, I'd like to announce before Paul closes in the benediction that the VFW Post 5744 is having a Veterans Day ceremony in South Berwick near the town hall at 2 p.m. and that also uh, following this event at the Evergreen Funeral Home we'll be laying a wreath to honor our veterans. The auxiliary will be lay laying that wreath and veterans are invited to a luncheon to follow at the Bibber facility across the street. So this time uncover Before I do the benediction, I'd like to read this uh, writ well-written thing about veterans. Veterans Day by Charles Dyson. On Veterans Day, we honor all who answered to a service call. Soldiers young and soldiers old fought for freedom, brave and bold. Some have lived while others died and all of them deserve our pride. We're proud of all the soldiers who kept thinking of red, white, and blue. They fought for us and all our rights. They fought through many days and nights. And though we may not know each name, we thank all veterans just the same. Now I'll end with the benediction. Let us depart in peace and in love and charity. And our neighbors, may we be joined together in common goal of service to God and our country. Let us drive safely and carefully to our homes, and may God's blessing be with us all. Amen. Cover. Honor Guard. Detail. Present. Hard.
Detail. Order. I'd like to thank everyone for coming today. Post 79 is so appreciative of the support that we have received from the town of Berwick and our extended community. And for each one that's here today, if there's a veteran in your life, give them a hug and thank them for their service and enjoy your day today. That went well. I think it went real well. I had Diana go after, but I think it worked out that way.